I'll be putting up a temporary board for some solar equipment and uh, put in two plus nuts with bolts and at the bottom I had a second plus nut but I put the bolt in backwards so it can leave a dent in my bottom part of my board uh, as an indication where to drill a second hole. Get a screwdriver. <sighs> It may not be easy to see, but this is the dent of the bolt. And that's where I, I'll be drilling my second hole. That's one. It works out beautifully. This board will hold uh, a solar meter, the controller meter, um, as well as a breaker box and the solar controller. Please remind that this is a temporary setup so uh, everything in the end everything will be built in and out of view uh, but this makes it a little bit easier for me at this moment. What I have is when the cables come in from the solar panel through the roof uh, they first will go to a breaker box. I have two breakers one in and one out. Uh, the wire goes in from the solar panels go out to the controller then from the controller goes out again to the second uh, circuit breaker and then it goes towards the batteries The solar wiring will come in next to the uh, uh, roof end. The wire comes down here into the circuit breaker, goes around it to the solar controller, and then back into the uh, exit circuit breaker, let me say it that way, and then the wire goes back to the batteries. In the final setup, the locations of these items are different uh, and as well very likely will have a different inverter uh, controller as well. They will be located uh, at a different location, a little bit uh, forward, uh, just above or below the kitchen area uh, and that area will be accessible from the rear. I wanted to explain the uh, overall design of my solar or electrical system. Um, and just place all the at least most of the components uh, just to give you some basic idea of what I'm planning to do. Um, I have three solar panels, I will have three solar panels on my roof of each uh, 135 watts, so a total of about 400 watts on my roof. Um, that should be sufficient for what I want to do. Uh, on average uh, 200 watts is, is is sufficient for most people so 400 watts is quite nice if it if it is necessary if if it shows that it's necessary to expand the uh, system uh, i will be able to add an, another one or two panels uh, but then keep them more or less mobile and store them under my mattress the third part of the system are the batteries uh, i plan to use lithium batteries but since they're first of all quite expensive and still a little bit iffy in, in usage and I'm not using the van full-time yet I want to wait as long as possible uh, buying those lithium batteries so in the meantime uh, I'll be uh, buying two regular six volt uh, golf batteries um, for a basic 12 volt system the most use I'll, I'll probably get out of it is by using the, the roof end, which hasn't been connected yet. In the upcoming weeks, I'll uh, be posting videos, uh, about three parts more or less, of this part of the installation. The installation of the solar panels on the roof. And then a separate part, getting them inside and then connecting them to a breaker box. 
and the controller and install meter for the controller. And those are the two uh, buses uh, for the positive and the negative that go towards the batteries. Uh, and the third part will be uh, behind the driver's seat, uh, the customer uh, connection point, um, where I'll install some basic connections for outshore power as well as uh, alternator power. I will have three solar panels on the roof and the cables will lead backwards towards the roof fan that I've installed a couple of weeks ago uh, in the back. Uh, I have uh, some VHB tape which I'll use to tape them to the roof so there's no holes. Then the cables on the solar panels are a 12 gauge. They will be connected with branch connectors, solar branch connectors to each other and then finally they will be connected to this uh, 8 gauge wire. Why I change the size of the wires is that I need a longer way to go and there's a drop in voltage involved. So by going to a thicker wire, I can go a longer distance. So I'll change into an uh, eight gauge wire on the roof and then go through a, a cable gland on the roof into the inside of the vehicle. On the inside, this cable goes uh, first to a breaker box. There are several ways uh, you can uh, work out the design. Um, you can use uh, combiner boxes outside as well as inside. You can use a combined combiner breaker box. I decided to combine the cables uh, outside, so I have only two cables coming in, a positive and negative, and then go directly to a breaker box. I have a small breaker box uh, that has room for four circuit breakers, right now only two. I may add a third one if I want to expand my number of solar panels so the extra panels can go through a second circuit breaker. Uh, the cable from the solar panels will come into a 30 amp circuit breaker then leave and go to the solar controller and when the power leaves the solar controller it will come back to the same breaker box and will go through a second circuit breaker in, in this case a 60 amp circuit breaker and then when it leaves it will go to two bus bars. So what does this, does this uh, breaker box do? It uh, isolates the controller so uh, in whatever situation there is you can either disconnect the solar panels or the solar controller uh, from the batteries uh, or both of them so whenever you want to work on it uh, then uh, you can work on it safely. There, there's an 8 gauge wire coming into the first circuit breaker from the ceiling from the roof when it leaves the first circuit breaker, I transform it to a, a six gauge wire, th even thicker. And that's all to prevent uh, too much drop in voltage. Uh, the six uh, gauge wire goes to the uh, controller and there's a six gauge wire that comes back to the second circuit breaker and to the bus bars. And then finally from the bus bars, both the positive and the negative, there's a uh, to number two uh, gauge cable that goes to the batteries. What I'll first be doing is uh, making a cable between, uh, that's a six gauge cable between um, the first circuit breaker to the solar controller. And that's at least a nice cut. Yeah, to make it a little bit easier, I'll remove the circuit breaker as it is a fairly big wire.
sits well. Uh, the negative wire goes past the circuit breaker. Uh, however, since there's an eight gauge wire coming in and a six inch wire, six gauge wire going out, I still need a, a dis distribution stud to connect both of them. And I'll, I'll have to do that at a later stage. Then I have to make the connection on the other side. Then I have to connect it uh, to the solar positive input. Good. Goes in here. <laughs> and the negative goes in here. And this wire goes through that uh, distribution lug. The next thing I have to do is put uh, two 6 gauge uh, cables, a positive and a negative, from the solar controller back to the breaker box. One comes from the top. Then I have a negative line that I don't have to cut it because it will come from the controller, but it will bypass the circuit breaker. And then there's uh, this one that goes to the bus bar. Then we have a third wire that comes out of the controller. Now I have to make the connection to the bus bar. We still have to install this flat wire. And this part goes to the solar controller. The wires are still too long, and, but that's mainly because I would like to reuse them on the permanent installation. What happens now is that from this point, I have a two gauge wire that will go to the batteries. So I still wanted to do the heat shrink. And it has glue, so that helps a little bit. That looks nice. I will do the second one. See the glue come out. So that's good. After connecting all the cables, it's wise to <laughs> check everything. Uh, and when I was doing that, I noticed that uh, one of the cables uh, is, is 
connected incorrectly. Um, what happened is these DC DIN breakers, uh, they have on one side a plus line that's indicated by plus uh, that is for the side where the highest load or the potential load uh, should be connected uh, so if you look at the one that goes to the batteries uh, the batteries the, the line to the batteries uh, exits on the plus side so the highest load is on the plus side however where the on the other circuit breaker uh, the solar panels come in on the top side uh, and the solar panels are the highest load in comparison to the controller that's on the other side. So the solar panel cable should enter here on the plus side and the red cable that goes to the controller should leave on the top. Uh, I have two solutions for that. Is, as I said, just uh, loosen the red cable and put it to the top. Uh, the other solution is maybe not as uh, neat but a lot easier and that's just to turn around the circuit breaker uh, it's unusual but it's uh, it's not a problem uh, so that's what i'll do right now uh, in the final uh, placement when when the final setup is is done i'll probably correct that so it's upside down now but at least the power source gets into the plus side of the breaker Hi guys, this is Joey and we're building a one-of-a-kind RV. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like and subscribe. Or better yet, uh, leave a comment. Thanks guys. Done a good job.